Scott. <laughs> Well, okay. each morning here on Good Morning San Diego at 9, we introduce you to a wide range of people who are doing great things here in San Diego. Yeah, we're calling them people of merit. And as you know, 10 years ago, America was changed forever when Al-Qaeda terrorists uh, hijacked four planes and crashed them into the t Twin Towers and the Pentagon. Changed a lot of lives, especially those who were directly involved in the families of the victims. But it changed a lot of people who also uh, went to the scene following it. And one of those people is our person of merit, Pastor Mickey Stoniag. He uh, is a chaplain with the fire department, and he also works as a pastor at uh, Rock Church. Good morning. Rock Church with Good Miles McPherson. Good morning. Yes. Thanks for being here. Yes, thank you. Take us back 10 years ago. Tell us where you were on September 11th. Um, well, I'm on a commission for um, curricula for the police department, and I was in Ontario at a meeting that uh, getting ready. My pager went off. There's a, a group of us that are signed up to be available to serve for major airline disasters and acts of terrorism. And I, my month happened to be on call was September. And that morning my pager went off and we're notified to get on a plane. Of course the airlines were shut down, but right. some went military, there were eight of us. And uh, we went, uh, Mike McIntosh locally and I happened to be on the team. We went from LA and were there just uh, a day later on the morning of the 13th, so. You arrive and uh, to a chaotic scene, but at the same time chaotic, but very well organized at times. I mean, when, when you got into um, the ground zero. Well, actually, Giuliani actually brought a, a lot of good leadership. Mm -hmm. It was very chaotic. And our team, actually, the Spiritual Care Aviation Incident Response Team, it was called the Scare Team. Yeah. Uh -oh. we, we've since changed that, yeah. you know, when the Scare Team arrives, not really, you know. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, you know, in time, things got uh, more organized and systemized. We were at Ground Zero, as well as at the morgue, temporary morgue, mm -hmm. and then also at the uh, Family Assistance Center, working with the families. You're there for two weeks. Exactly what did you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, each day was different. You started six in the morning and probably went to about midnight um, each day. And we had different shifts of what we did. Uh, a lot of my time was training the local clergy and getting them to be serving in their shifts at Ground Zero and at the Family Assistance Center because there's a lot of need, uh, of course, uh, for the firefighters, police officers, Port, of Fort, and Port Authority. As a reporter, I was there a short time after as well, and the thing that struck me were the people that were searching mm -hmm. for family members. Mm -hmm. There were long, long, long lines yes. of people. I, I'm assuming those are the people that you were assisting and Yes, helping. absolutely. Um, How do you in fact, do the that? images yeah. of all of that was at the Family Assistance Center. Mm -hmm. Originally, it was at the Armory in, in Manhattan, then moved to uh, Pier 94. Uh, working with literally uh, thousands of family members grieving um, and, th and that's why we were there to provide support uh, love comfort and just sitting with people during their times of grief I've got to imagine that had to be so tough on you taking in everybody's pain and, and trying to help them how did it change you as a person well actually it's like our firefighters um, they're trained and trained and trained you don't engage those emotions you you do your job and the same for us a lot of it is you're there for others uh, at moments uh, and just the smell of death and, and being there at, at what was called the pile there right at the right the rescue efforts uh, the scene was you know when a, a body of a firefighter or police officer was found the whole site would stop and everyone would stand at attention, all the equipment stopped, and they would gather the individual up and hoist them over to where we were. And we were there to pray for the department, the family. And then they would put them onto an emergency vehicle, transport them to the morgue, and then tears, everyone crying, and then they'd go back to work mm -hmm. and just engage the job that needed to be done. A horrible, horrible thing, but at the same time, uh, your impression, of, the, of New York and this country and the way they responded at that time? Well, originally, in fact, at the Rock Church this Sunday uh, at 8, 10, 12, 5, and 7, we actually are interviewing reviewing the fire chief and mm -hmm. the harbor police chief. We have a beautiful display from the fire to, uh, fires uh, from San Diego, a huge display yeah. of some of the artifacts. But, uh, um, you know, it's those reflections and memories of things that we're going to be sharing and, and really honoring, not just looking back, but looking forward to 
you know, how our nation's been changed. New York at that moment had shut down and a lot of somberness, but um, reflective, but very quickly, things kind of got back to normal, which, mm -hmm. which is healthy in recovery, but then it's like, I'm not always sure we learn the lessons. You know, all the disasters we keep having with fires and earthquakes and floods, and I don't remember a decade like this. Mm -hmm. And I, I would hope as a people, we can really hold fast to what we call the three Fs, uh, in the, well, the four Fs in the fire department, faith, family, and friends. And that's mm -hmm. gonna be the subject of my message this, this Sunday. At the rock. So again, that's 8, 10, 12, 5, and 7, and, mm -hmm. and everybody's invited to Everyone's join you. welcome at the rock. It's a great place and a fun place, too. Wonderful. All right. Mickey Sonier, thank you so much for thank joining you. us today. All right. Appreciate God bless it. you. Take care of yourself. Thank you. You too.